Congratulations <laughs> on the new single and the music video. Uh, Distorted Light Beam, as you guys said, marks the beginning of a new era for Bastille. And it comes a little over two years since the release of Doom Days, which I realized is interesting because that also that album also speaks on the importance of escapism, which kind of parallels this new single as well. Uh, what was it like having to map out and conceptualize a new era for Bastille during the pandemic? Were there apprehensions from anyone in the band creatively, or was everyone just itching to get back to writing and recording? We actually sort of never really stopped the you know, writing and recording process. I mean, we sort of been in the studio a bit just before the pandemic started. So our heads were kind of in new album mode. We planned to take a kind of year away from touring. Right. Um, and obviously the pandemic hit and changed everything. It changed everyone's lives like significantly. But um, yeah, I guess our last album was about escapism, but it was about kind of losing yourself in hedonism. And it was quite intimate. It was all set over one night. Mm -hmm. And with this album, we're thinking more about the future and right. about theming and the kind of infinite possibilities of different versions of the future that exist. So it, it, it's kind of, if the, last, if the last album was this slightly grimy party record, this next one is very much about like science fiction. It's about different versions of the future. And it's about like time traveling and escaping. Yeah. Like a lot of people have done over the last year, you know, escaping using fiction and using right. video games and using the internet to kind of to take yourself to other places. Um, and, the, you know, the amazing possibilities of that and also the right. kind of negative drawbacks of that. But ultimately, we just wanted to make like a really big, fun album as well. So I guess like a lot of our music, it's sort of deceptively upbeat and then you listen right. to the lyrics. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, which I think is uh, is a kind of a, a good way to to approach this conversation of technology and 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 reliance of technology because to me the approach of the song to, to today's culture of technology is pretty refreshing because usually it's the same boomer mindsets of society is regressing because of its reliance to technology but in reality you know um of course anything in excess is bad but it's thanks to technology that you know we're still able to function in the world and art is still being able to be created and uh thanks to forms of escapism the people have been able to stay sane during the global pandemic so was this really like what you wanted to express uh, uh, going into writing this new era, or did it kind of happen organically as you were writing it? It kind of emerged. I think um, we were yeah, just, just sort of like nodding towards lots of sci fi uh, books and films and stuff, um, kind of opened up a lot of those conversations and topics because they're kind of naturally in there. I think we were all kind of really interested in the idea that, like, obviously the present day for us is like we're kind of living through the sci fi of the past and all the tech right. that we have. Instead, it's easy to sort of like I don't know, shout into the wind about how things are different and change. But I think, it, yeah, like you said, the, the possibilities are amazing, even though there are drawbacks. And, you know, look at the division in society, all that kind of stuff. Right. What, what it means, even on like a musical level, like the, the democratization of music, because people who have a laptop, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a laptop, you can, you can record and you can make something that sounds really impressive. And that's, right. that's amazing. Like, it shouldn't be the preserve of people who have a record deal or who have those money. It should be for everyone. And that applies not just to music, but so many other things. So like like you said, it's just about it's about the sort of like weird knife edge between between tech and, and the possibilities that have been positive and then right. when they can be positive. That's just I guess humanity being a bit awful. But yeah. Yeah. It's uh, all stuff that's kind of I guess we're interested in, but we wanted to sort of like talk about these things a little bit in music, but not in like a judgmental way, just in a yeah. what everyone's going through. You know, we've all had a crazy year and a half in very different ways. But we've all relied so heavily on on these things to keep us sane, to keep us yeah. in touch. Right. Keep us, uh, it's completely normal that we're chatting on Zoom, whereas like a year right. and a half this probably wouldn't happen. So it's uh, yeah. It's interesting because it is a tricky it is a tricky message to to, to dance around. You know, you don't want to you don't want to go um, too far into the technology is awesome, but you also kind of want to talk about how it has its benefits. So I think the message was delivered pretty well. Uh, so that's that's also a testament to your songwriting. So congratulations, guys. But I also want to hear from everybody. You know, um, what was it like the day you all sat down and heard the final version of Distorted Light Beam for the first time? I'm not talking about you know the the earlier drafts. I'm talking about the file that was literally named Distorted Light beam underscore final final v2 final mix dot lab you know what, you, what was it like I was, um, yeah go on. i was gonna say it's just always so exciting because you sort of spend all this time recording and and, and you sort of be, uh, to be to belabor a cliche you put your heart and soul into it and so right. when you finally have um yeah when you finally have a finished product a it's really exciting just to have something sort of tangible but also it's like it's it's that really nice feeling of like now we can go with it now we have a plan and and, and that sense mm -hmm. of like now we have like a campaign coming and stuff so it's, it's always right. that that first single of any album is is like kind of almost like a reset and 
we're ready to sort of attack this again. Um, and I think especially, obviously, it's, again, more cliches, given the year we've all just had it. Right. Just to have that moment of like right now, hopefully we're approaching enough of a sort of normality that we can get back to doing what we love doing is um, it's sort of a, a, a very much needed positive moment after a year of very negative moments, I think. Right. This is particularly for me, but yeah. I think as well it's important to know that Dan changes his mind every 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hearing the final version was hearing it on the radio. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> as in, um, we, you know, we'd all yeah. received the final version a few times up until right. the final release, and then, and then and you hear it on the radio and go, oh, oh, it, ch- it changes. Good. I don't even yeah. want to know the, like how long the final the final file name was. I'm pretty sure it had like just like final, 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 <laughs> V2, V3, V4 in it. It's 14. <laughs> okay, okay. I've had have the album um, mastered four times because it's okay. changed. Yeah, but then... Uh, uh, that, that is kind of just part of the whole process. I mean, especially when you hear something back and you're like, wait, I could do something different. And then you kind of go back into the into the, sure. into the whole workshop of it. But then uh, how about for you, Woody? What was it like just uh, hearing it for the first time on the radio, the final mix? Yeah, I think sort of leading to what Will said as well, in terms of it's a given year we've all had, it's like to hear it, it's like, oh, we, we, we get to go again. Because obviously this is like the best job in the world. We'll get to, right. well, all of times travel the world with your friends, you get to play music with people. It's like, oh, this is, a, it's like, oh, thank God it's really good because it was crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point of the end. I think it's going to be good. So, right. um, yeah, it's just, it's just like, it's like a privilege to get to do this for a job. So it's like, we get to go again. So it's fun. Also, I, I think it's so nice when you do release music because that's the first time again having had this period away where you get to really interact with fans and really there's, there's real sort of visceral sense of connection right. when people want to the music like obviously on social media you get messages and things in the interim but mm-hmm. when, when you drop a drop a record that immediate like response from people and, and to sort of remember that again not wanting to be too sort of pretentious about it that you are connecting with you and it, yeah. it is, I, I think that's a really nice thing about it yeah, I mean, uh, with the music video as well, I mean, I think a lot of people connected to it on that level uh, the same way they did with the song. But I see the rush of comments kind of flowing in. They're connecting it, comparing it to maybe Black Mirror. But then I kind of got more of like a cyberpunk Blade Runner uh, Minority Report meets Gaspar Noe kind of thing. Uh, who is more correct in those comparisons or, or are we all just correct in all these inspirations? The Gaspar Noe reference was definitely one that like the director Jack right. hey, we, we talked about that a lot, him a lot in terms of the lighting and the cinematography. Right. Yeah, I guess I guess try to do what you can within the world of music video to create the entire world. Like yeah, mm-hmm. definitely the kind of Blade Runner and, and, and Cyberpunk. But I'm um, also just trying to create our own slightly individual version of science fiction. It's, it's hard right. because it's, just, it's so like thoroughly explored. It's like you're reinventing the wheel basically, yeah. Yeah, so I guess it's just about like you know setting out the school for, for our album, what the tech is, what what futurescape and future ink are, um, right. and yeah, like knowing that it's all been done before. But like I guess the whole point of sci-fi is that it's it's used in different ways to explore relevant conversations to now. Right. So yeah, that's, that's uh that's kind of what we're trying to do with it. No, I think it's just, it's successful in kind of creating that own brand because usually when you you know when you look at cyber you know cyberpunk media or future punk media, it's all it's very it's a very uh, dark and uh, and and almost a nihilistic view of technology. But for this, it's kind of just like presenting it as it is and the possibilities, both positives and negatives of it. So I think that was successful in kind of the message it was is, it was conveying. But to something a bit uh, lighter, as we only have a couple more minutes left, and I'm really enjoying talking to you guys. I do want to get these questions out of the way. Um, you guys have known to give your little interesting takes on other songs with your covers, right? So you guys have done Billie Eilish's Bad Guy, Miley Cyrus's We Can't Stop, and even a psycho Norman Bates inspired cover of TLC's No Scrubs. Are you kidding me? That's like brilliant. But uh, what have you guys been uh, kind of eyeing on or like listening to that maybe we'll hear a Bastille rendition of soon? I just really want to hear Dan singing Ashley Coe's Swimble Buddy. I think that would be... <laughs> that was sexy as hell. That was sexy as hell. Yeah, I can see what I best. Um, that is a really good question. Um, there's nothing really on my, on the radar at the minute for me anyway. I, I, I think that it, when when we get asked to do it for, for something, I think that's when that's when we we start we start to we start to kind of like 
um, start to build up that drive and start right. having a look at like at what might work. And um, we're normally given kind of like uh, sort of confines, like right, uh, and then we can sort of start looking at that box. But there's nothing really. Um, I like I like Griff a lot, and we fun to do one of those. Griff is great. Yeah. Um, oh man, yeah. Like you said, like Kyle said, when when there's when the task is put in front of us, we will we will go deep. Okay. Uh, well, I. Uh... I mean, We've been trying to we've been trying to sort of bring some of our old songs into into the world of this new album a little bit. So that's been quite fun in rehearsals, kind of uh, reframing, right? Reframing, like I guess older Bastille tunes in, in, in a very different way. Well, so we can't wait. We uh, we know you guys have like festival dates and tour dates coming up, so I can't wait to see that. Uh, even just through the screen of YouTube or or, or whatever, uh, I'm super duper excited for it. But now that we've been talking about escapism, I do want to ask, uh, you know, in finding sanity during the pandemic, what is everyone in the band's just personal form of escapism? Video games, you know, uh, movies. What have you guys been up to this past year to help you with that escapism? That isn't music because you guys are musicians, so obviously that's where you gravitate toward. But yeah, I will be anybody in the world, Lisa. <laughs> Okay. And by, and by being he needs, he will lose to anybody in the world. Like, and then smash up the coffee table in a rage. <laughs> How about for everybody else? Um, I guess for me, it would be like films and TV and reading like a, a lot. Um, and then I guess, yeah, just chatting to people. I sometimes go for a run if I can be bothered. Right. That's been quite nice, I guess. Literal London escaping, is. yeah. And <laughs> London, like, like, literal escaping. I think it, it, like London in the pandemic has been so strange to be in this one of the busiest cities in the world and suddenly right. see it like close down. I've been cycling everywhere on my on my bike and, it's like twenty eight days later, you know, it's like empty. Probably like, <laughs> yeah. like you know, see it twenty eight days later, it's just around the corner. So that's that's kinda of mad. Um yeah, I guess a lot of the kind of new stuff. And 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 like cooking as well is quite a nice escape. Nice. Having you know, we because we're away quite a lot and we're on tour loads like Often we don't really get to cook at all, and, and when, when we're back, when we do, it's like about just getting something quick so we can go and see see people. So it's been nice having a bit more time to like actually get to make a meal for a few hours and enjoy it, and not feel like I should be somewhere. Else. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of, of, of all the things that I get up to. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was really boring. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, I guess yeah, for me, I mean. Film and TV to some extent, like uh, probably more video. I'm probably more on the video game side of things. Um, and um, I've gone full nerd, Dungeons and Dragons. Ooh, Ooh. you play D and D, dude. I'm a DM. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I, yeah dude. Right. I have my dice like literally like, right here. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. D and D and like and, and, and magic as well. I've just been going full nerd, man. Dude, I got like the DM screen and everything like right here. I hold games. Oh, like... <laughs> yeah, it's like legit, like the whole thing, dude. <laughs> but it's it's super duper. Fun. Sorry, we geeked out for a bit, but then uh, yes, uh, continue. Um, I have been reading quite a lot, um, and I kind of got a bit addicted to online chess. Oh, um, okay, dude, that's it's huge on Twitch now. People have been streaming it like crazy. I have played chess for a while, but I'm not very good. And then I decided to like study a bit and get better. Right. And it turns out it um I was reading a thing, gambling charities have had to get involved because <laughs> it's the same responses as winning and losing money because you rating points. Right. Um, right. So I'm literally just playing for ten hours oh. <laughs> in the world we don't have my point of I think you should take a rest from. And also I'm really bad. If I really, <laughs> I'm making no progress. <laughs> we are so different. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was good. I was about to say that. Like everyone's got completely different interests. One's raging over FIFA. Other one's taking drives out of London, and then you got one playing D and D, and the other one playing chess. It's a, uh, it's a diverse. <laughs> I love it. But then before I let you guys go, as we are out of time, unfortunately, can you please send a message to all your Filipino fans tuned in through ninety nine point five Play FM? That's cool. Yeah. Um, hey, ninety nine point five FM. We are Bastille. Uh, we miss you guys. We really want to come and see you soon. We miss you. We love you, and we'll be back as soon as we are allowed to. There you go. Uh, we I hope you guys have a wonderful brunch uh, and the rest of your day. <laughs> and enjoy the rest of your interviews, guys. It's been great to meet you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. Take care.